Okay, very good, my, my dear students. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time that you watch this video. Today, let's continue with our second lesson, our second unit for fluency, okay? Fluency practice and fluency in English, okay? The question is, how does it feel to be fluent in English? Yes, when you are learning a language, it's common to feel sad about your progress. You want to become fluent, but it seems that the goal is so far away. If you hear an expression that you don't know or have difficulty understanding a fast conversation, it's easy to lose confidence in your abilities and your learning. You might get negative ideas like, my English is so bad. You might wonder, will I ever become fluent in English? Or is it possible for me to speak fluently in English? Let me tell you about my language experience. I remember when I was learning English and French, and it was at intermediate level. At the intermediate level, I could communicate okay in daily life, but I still felt limited. Once I was an adult, I felt more like a child because I could only express simple ideas. I was shy because I knew my speaking wasn't perfect. It made me hesitate to participate in conversations and social events because I couldn't express all my ideas or show my true personality. Have you ever felt this way? Have you ever felt limited by your English? So what does fluency feel like? Fluency in a second of your language means freedom. Freedom to communicate as efficient as you do in Spanish. Freedom to speak about any topic with any person. That is fluency, okay? When you're fluent in English, you will be free to express all your ideas in exactly the way to say them. You will be free to make jokes, talk with new people, understand TV shows, and speak in important or stressful situations without feeling embarrassed or, with an, or worrying about making mistakes. When you're fluent, you feel totally at home when traveling, living in an English-speaking country, or when chatting with native speakers or with your English teacher, or your French teacher. You will be free to make jokes, talk with new people, understand TV shows, and speak in important or stressful situations without feeling embarrassed or worrying about making mistakes. I can tell you from my experience that fluency feels great. So what's the best way to become fluent in English? I don't believe there is a best method or a secret formula to become fluent but I do believe that it is possible for every student with time and practice. Remember, my friends, the more you practice something, the better you are at it. One strategy is to learn and practice phrasal verbs, vocabulary, pronunciation, common expressions, slang, and idioms. This means you will learn about many aspects of the English language. All of them are necessary for fluency, slang, idioms, and phrasal verbs. It's like, it's very informal language or specific words used by a particular group of people. Examples, a wallflower. This describes a shy person. For example, you can say, you can say, John is a wallflower, or Peter and, and Ramon are wallflowers. It means that they are very shy or very timid people. Idioms, they are phrases or expressions that typically present a figurative, non-literal meaning attached to the phrase. Example, get off my back, is an idiom meaning stop bothering me. Idioms, my friends, you need to memorize them as full phrases. Don't, don't confuse and learn them like small chunks, small words. No, that is a mistake. Here you need to learn the idiom fully, as a full sentence, okay? Why? Because it is there in the full sentence that you have the complete meaning. Phrase verbs. They are the combination of two or three words from different grammatical categories. For example, be fed up. This one is be bored. Then many phrasal verbs, there are three categories, separable, non-separable, and three word phrasal verbs. All of them, my friends, also you need to memorize them by heart. Memorize them and use them as full phrases. Don't make the mistake of separating them into words because it won't tell you the meaning of the phrasal verb. Like this example, be fed up, okay? Besides learning verbs, common pronunciation, slang, and idioms, 
you also need to, to read daily. Down on the link, you will find a link to practice your reading skills. This is a free website to practice your reading skills. You can practice it every day, okay? Remember, the more you practice reading, the, the, the more you will learn about vocabulary and grammar. You will also learn new phrases. This website is free, you have to pay nothing, and it's divided into basic, intermediate, and advanced levels. Feel free to explore the site, and I'm sure you will find very interesting readings for you, okay, for your level. Remember, whenever you find a word that you don't know, write it down, find it in the, in the dictionary, and please write examples or sentences using the word. Also, learn the category. Is it a verb, a noun, an adjective, or an other? And look at the use in dictionaries. Very good, my friends. So thank you very much for being here today. I hope this class was great for you. If you have questions, please ask me, email me, or write comments on the video. So thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day.